Ahoy there, internet world. I've got my sweet glasses on today because I'm about to get down on some Japanese or nerdery for you all, so prepare yourselves. Um, the main thing I wanted to talk about today is why there are three distinct alphabets in Japanese and why I think that kanji is always going to stick around. Um, some of you may or may not know that in Korean language they actually used to have a much more complex writing style that utilized similar symbols but they switched to a more phonetic based alphabet to simplify things for both their native people and foreign learners. Um, one of the main differences between that and Japanese though is that with Koreans they actually have a full alphabet at their disposable disposal that is similar in some ways to English and that you can create a huge lexicon of sounds and words so that each one is distinct and unique. The main problem with that for Japanese is that it's a phonetic alphabet that is actually very simple in a lot of ways. They have the three alphabets, two that are the phonetic writing systems, uh, katakana and hiragana. Hiragana is largely used for uh, native words, teaching children how to say basic things. But there's really only maybe about 60 sounds that you can make, um, give or take. There's a lot of glides and things that you can do, but the basic alphabet is based on a a, he, hu, he, ho kind of base sound. And most of the words have consonants broken by vowels, as in uh, akihabara, so that you don't see any uh, real consonants getting smushed together, unless it's like T and S, or N getting thrown around. So because of that, a lot of their words end up sounding very much alike, and uh, that can be very confusing when you're trying to say something and it ends up having three or four different meanings. Like the word for paper sounds the same as the word for hair. Kami, also the word for God. So are you talking about the hair on your head? Are you talking about God or are you talking about paper? Like the word or the name for watercolor paper is mame do kami or mame do pepa which mermaid paper or mermaid hair it's kind of a clever little pun which I love but because of the similarities in the sounds or the words they use kanji to help differentiate so that you know that you're buying paper not some weird falsified potentially medical use voodoo use mermaid hair so that's something that's really good to know um, and something to keep in mind also the words for candy and rain ame the pronunciation or the accent might be slightly different but they have pretty much the same sound same hiragana and uh, that's also something important to have differentiated because you don't want to say ah mega futemasu and have all the children run outside and try and catch candy because not gonna work that way sorry kids um, also a couple of things that sound very similar the alem is the words for flower and nose hana hana so are, which are we talking about and for me what's funny about that is smell is niyoi but speaking is hanashimasu a lot of things they'll add a shimasu or a sudu to the end of to denote that it's actually the act of doing something so to me that's a little confusing why is smell and speak different in my mind hanashimasu should be the verb for smelling but it's not it's speaking so however that works, maybe they're thinking that speech is largely through the nose. There's a lot of sounds in Japanese that do come through the nose or that have kind of a focus there. Nioi! Kind of stuff like that. Um, also, um, fireworks and nosebleed sound very similar. So for me, this is a great pun because if any of you watch anime, you know when there's a perverted moment, a lot of people get nosebleeds, and that's called hanaji. Hanaji. Um, which is basically the combination of nose and blood or bleed, G or chi. So, haha! And uh, the word for fireworks is hanabi, with a B sound. And so I like to joke, hanaji, hanabi! When there's a very perverted explosion of something or other. Um, fun for me. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else finds it funny, but I love it. But, uh, those are some of the things that sound very, very similar in Japanese, and that's one of the main reasons why I think things like kanji are always going to be used. Um, their second phonetic alphabet is called katakana, and that is used largely for words of foreign origin or for uh, onomatopoeias, like the sound giddy 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 giddy, 
when you grind your teeth, or a dookie, dookie, dookie for the heartbeat, which I believe toki can also be the name for the heart, but there's like three or four other words for it too that seem to be more common in popular usage. Also, uh, giddle, giddle, the sound of a frog. Um, a pun that I was taught, because so many things in Japanese do sound alike, is uh, you could say, Atashi no uchi ni kaerimasu, or kaeru. Uchi ni kaeru. And kaeru is the verb for return home. And it's denoted only for returning home. If you wanted to say you were going to a friend's house, you would want to say ikimasu, or kimasu, I believe. But it should be ikimasu, if I'm right. Um, but in Japanese, the word for kaeru, kaeru, also sounds like frog. So the name, or the sound that a frog makes is gero gero. So the silly little pun you can make is uchi ni. Kaeru? Gero gero? My house is a frog? Or something like that? Kind of silly, but I love it. So, those are a couple of the things that really make it important to try and learn a little bit of kanji, even if you don't intend to do much reading in Japan. Um, it's just, it, it's never going to go away. The language is very similar, or very simple in its sound structure, and that's one of the reasons why it's easy to learn the words, but also very confusing for a lot of people, because so many things sound so similar, and they have so totally different meanings, that how do you know what people are saying? It all has to be based on the context, and that's why their writing system is so intensely confusing at times. Um, good luck. <laughs> I'm doing my best. I've learned a few simple basic kanjis now at this point. I knew some before I came, but I learned a little bit every few days as I go along, I'll pick something up, which is very helpful. And many of my coworkers take a lot of pride out of being my Nihongo no sensei. So that's useful, and I thank them for that. So, have a good night everybody! Good luck! <laughs>